welcome back to Common Sense, everyone. Well, one of the main culprits for the passage of that horrendous gun control bill I broke down before the break is none other than the rhino of the hour, Texas Senator John Cornyn. I would say Texas conservatives are livid at his support for such unconstitutional legislation, but given this video of his appearance at the Texas GOP convention in Houston last week, I think that might be an understatement. But at least Cornyn showed up. Meanwhile, Governor Greg Abbott was nowhere to be seen at the convention. I guess he's finally given up on acting like he cares and has finally accepted his rightful place among the other rhinos in his state. As he should. Because Texans are done with playing along with the rest of the nation's globalist games. They have no time for frauds. They want truth, they want independence, and they want it now. According to their recent platform, which states that in addition, in addition to officially rejecting that Joe Biden is the legitimate president of the United States, they are pushing for a referendum to potentially secede from the United States. Sounds based to me. Of course, the media will tell you it can't be done, but then again, I'm not convinced they've ever read any of our founding documents before, much less the Texas Constitution. So we're not exactly relying on them for expertise on this particular topic. But back, but back again on the show is someone who actually is an expert. In fact, he wrote a whole book about it called Texit, Why and How Texas Will Leave the Union. Daniel Miller. Daniel, thank you so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. You know, so this is really interesting because we're told by the media and pretty much everyone, uh, they're kind of all saying the same narrative, that Texas simply cannot secede. Uh, you did a great job of breaking this down in, your, in detail in your book. So I really encourage everyone to read that, of course. But I, I also want to know, can you explain why that's not true and why, you know, Texas's constitution actually, what it actually says about secession? Sure. It's, uh, you know, it's always interesting when these alleged experts, and when I say alleged experts, they're always dragging some uh, third-rate adjunct professor from Bug Tussle Community College uh, out to talk about this issue. So he here's what it boils down to. Okay, Article 1, Section 10 of the U.S. Constitution has a list of everything states are forbidden from doing. Guess what's not in that list? Withdrawing from the union. Right. So under the 10th Amendment, anything not granted to the federal government is or prohibited to the states is reserved to the states and the people. So therefore, it means that the question of Texas independence or the independence of any state is up to the voters of that state. And so you have to turn to our documents. Uh, Article one, section two of the Texas Constitution uh, reserves the right to alter, reform or abolish our government in such manner as we may think expedient as an inalienable right, which means that it is ultimately at that same level of rights as the right to keep and bear arms, freedom of speech, and freedom of religion. So uh, ultimately, uh, this is a question for the people of Texas to answer. The, the questions of self-government, self-determination are always left to the people. Yeah, and it's interesting because they're, like, the, the left is coming after Texas, of course. Of course, the media has always been after Texas saying they can't do this. Uh, but it's like, why do they want to hold on to Texas so badly? Because they don't even like Texas. They don't like Texas's politics. They don't like its culture. It's like, you know, wanting to stay with an, with a boyfriend or a girlfriend who doesn't want to be with you. It's very strange. They are. They look, they are textbook uh, abusive spouse. I mean, that's just that's just the way that they behave. And, uh, you know, the, the but the fact of the matter is, is it's such a knee jerk reaction. Uh, the opposition and look, I've, and I've been at this for 25 years now. Uh, the opposition will lump into a couple of different categories, right? And, and none of them make sense. None of them are, uh, have any sort of logical consistency whatsoever. Uh, but they'll say it's unconstitutional. And then you say, okay, point to the, point, point to the, the part of the constitution where it forbids a state from leaving. Well, it's illegal. Okay. Well, break out the law. Show me the law. I'll wait. Well, when, when they can't do that, they'll say, well, the Supreme Court said, well, you know, the Supreme Court said in an 1868 decision, but then they don't want to go look at uh, Jacobson v. Massachusetts in 1905, which completely destroyed that Supreme Court argument. Right. And, and of course, we're talking about the same Supreme Court that uh, that uh, overturned Roe v. Wade today and that they're saying is Ill, in an illegitimate court. So, you know, they can't make up their mind. And then, of course, their fallback is always, uh, well, it'll be a civil war. 
Well, when's the last time uh, we had a civil war here because people voted, right? I thought we just spent the last 85 years of, of U.S. foreign policy going around the world, spanking dictators who didn't respect the right of the people to vote in democratically held elections. So, uh, you know, what they're essentially saying is we hate Putin because he invaded Ukraine, but we're totally cool with it if President Potato Head invades Texas because Texans voted wrong. Yeah, and I, I wonder if the reason why they don't understand basically anything that they're saying or any of their arguments is because they don't know Texas history. I mean, Texas is very unique, of course, and it's a state that I feel like unless you live in Texas, a lot of people are not informed of the actual history of the state. And I think that's a major problem, too. We don't do a great job of educating people on the history after, you know, early American history on the East Coast and how, you know, Texas Texas was has always been, I mean, it's the Lone Star State for a reason. It's always been and its own independent being. And I think people don't really understand that. They just don't get the history. Well, you know, one of the biggest challenges that we've got, I mean, uh, obviously they don't understand our founding and governing documents, but they, they don't understand our history. Uh, you know, in the, the Newsweek articles, the flurry of Newsweek articles that came out after uh, the, uh, the Republican convention, uh, they interviewed the head of the Texas State Historical Association, and he, you know, gave some a blanket pronouncement about how terrible it is. And, you know, you go look at this guy's, you go look at this guy's record and, and realize that the last time he popped his head up in the news, uh, he was saying that the Alamo was fought to support white supremacy, right? So it, it's not exactly like he's the most credible source. So history has become uh, the, the tool and the mechanism that they can, that they can utilize to re-engineer the future. So our, our organization had to fight so hard against the Reimagine the Alamo project. Uh, and it's uh, honestly one of the reasons that are motivating Texans. Look, you can only push a people so far until they say, they look up and they say, uh, governments governed by consent of the governed and I no longer consent. Yeah. Yeah, and you think that they would just let them go since they don't like Texas so much. I mean, NBC came out with a headline talking about how anti-gay Texas is. And it's like, okay, if you don't like that United States, let them go. I don't understand what the, uh, the issue is. Uh, but it's, you know, it's also interesting because, of course, we're seeing this major purge in the Texas GOP of all of these rhinos. Uh, you know, Alex Stein went and he, uh, of course, called out Dan Crenshaw. He called out Ted Cruz. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, distrust in the leaders in Texas right now. It's a pretty revolutionary moment, I would say. I mean, what do you think is the future of the GOP down there? I know they just had their meeting. I played a clip of that. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's going to look like a different state soon, I think. Yeah, and I'll tell you, uh, a year ago, uh, I was on the on a Texas tour in support of Kyle Biederman's uh, Texas Independence Referendum Act, and, and every crowd uh, that I visited, I told them, I said, you need to understand that the next 100 years of Texas history are being written right now. Uh, we are getting ready to see some significant changes. Uh, unfortunately, it won't be all of the changes that we wanted. You know, Greg Abbott decided that he didn't want to hold any celebratory events. And so therefore, he backed out of speaking at the convention, probably because he was going to get the same reception Corning got, but was perfectly fine renting a venue across the street and holding a party, right, the, the same day as the convention. So, um, you know, we're not going to get all the changes that we want. But I, I think the mood of the electorate here in Texas, the, the level of... Of support that we're seeing for Texas and a whole host of pro-Texas policies uh, are, are sending a clear message to these elected officials, even, even the rhinos. It's like, look, you, you're going to do what we need you to do to take care of Texas business. You're going to respect our constitutional right to alter, reform, or abolish our government in such manner as we may think expedient by giving Texans a vote on Texas. We want our border secure. We want adequate pushback against the federal government until we get Texas. Uh, you know, these guys are, are hearing the message loud and clear. And if they didn't hear it, maybe they can get a hold of uh, John Cornyn and he can translate. <laughs> Yeah, he certainly knows what it's like to be booed off stage. So, uh, but you know, it's well, look, Anna, let's let's be honest. That guy elicits the same amount of excitement as a colonoscopy or a tax audit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's usually the case for rhinos and anybody like that. Uh, too much yeah. soy, I think, in their diet. They're uh, not really, uh, you know, fervently supporting anything. But uh, you know, it's it's interesting because we're seeing this happen at the same time. All of these gun laws are being pushed. All this federal legislation in that way. I just talked about that in the last segment. Um, you know, this seems like pretty much the strongest like call for secession that we've ever heard, you know, in history. I mean, I don't I don't know exactly. Of course, I know you've been working on this for 20 
uh, five years. But it's like, you know, between the gun issue, that and the border and the way that the rhinos in Texas have handled that. Why would Texas want to stay a part of the United States? I mean, they're they're a border state. So this is a very serious issue for them. And it's a serious issue for the entire country, but specifically the state of Texas. Sure. And 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 at the risk of being redundant, I'll just I'll put it to you and, and the viewers the way that I did. I think the last time uh, I was on on your show and, and it's this, you know, at whether you're in Texas or any other state, ask yourself this question. If your state right now was already a self-governing independent nation. Right. It had control over its own border policy and immigration policy. It had its own monetary policy, its own currency. Uh, it had its own military. It had its own embassies and passports, its own trade, po- everything that 200 other self-governing independent nations around the world have. And instead of talking about withdrawing from the union, we were talking about whether or not your state should join the union. Knowing everything you know about the federal government right now, today, would you vote for your state to enter the union? That's a really good point. Absolutely not. And that's why we had the Articles of Confederation. We didn't want to be, you know, the country that we are. Very, very interesting point. Uh, Well, thank you so much, Daniel. I really appreciate you being here. Hey, thank you, Anna. Appreciate it so much. Yeah, that's a a good point. I know if I were a founding father right now, um, I don't I wouldn't want to join the union. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't vote for my state to join the union. Uh, that's insane. Given everything that's happening, I wouldn't want the executive branch to exist. I would be voting for the articles. Of, we would actually, if this were happening now, you know, that would be the case. Um, I don't think that we would have, anyone would want to join the union. And that's the thing we seriously have to consider because we're not the country we were when we founded it. We weren't the vision that the found, that the founders intended. And that's a real problem because we broke a promise to ourselves. We broke a promise to we, the people and, you know, not many people are framing it that way, and we should be. We should be thinking about it that way. Stick around until after the break. We have more coming up. We're going to be talking about the recent SCOTUS decision, Roe v. Wade, and uh, all the crazy leftists that have something to say about it. 